So at Rackspace and, and at many companies, it's really hard to hire uh, programmers, particularly here in San Francisco. If you need a Node.js programmer or an iPhone developer, it's uh, pretty difficult to convince them to come and join your company. So we, we're always interested in new ways to find programmers and figure out how to talk with them and get them uh, recruited. And Guild has a great new way. Uh, they built a technology that helps us uh, find programmers, and we're using it here at Rackspace. So we're going to find out more about it right now. Uh, who are you? I'm uh, Vivian Ming. I'm the chief scientist at Guild. And I'm a research scientist at UC Berkeley, a theoretical neuroscientist at the Redwood Center for Theoretical Neuroscience. And I'm a mom, and I got hooked on looking at big data to try and understand the world. Very cool. And who are you? I'm Shirai Desai. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Guild. I'm a technologist at heart. I've been uh, in the tech space for too many years than, that I, than I care, care to count. Um, but and I really got interested in what we're doing right now because I spent a um, majority of my career running tech companies and finding developers was such a painful thing. And it was hard, it cost too much money. So that's why, you know, about a few years ago I decided, you know, there's a better way to do this. There must be a better way to do, to do this. And that's why we're here. Yeah. What is it, what is it that you guys do for, a, and is it only for big companies like a Rackspace, a 5,000 person company, or could a, you know, a startup that needs two developers, could they use it as well? Absolutely. You know, this is for, you know, any company that is looking for a developer. You know, in a nutshell, Robert, what we're doing is we are uh, allowing companies to find developers that they most likely otherwise will never find. And what we're finding is, on the one hand, as you said, it's hard to find developers and it's costly and all those things. On the other hand, you know, today it's very easy to find information on a lot of developers. I can go on LinkedIn and I can do some searches for Node.js and you know, thousands of people will show up, right? Problem is, how do I know who's good? How do I know they're not ranked in any order? And what happens then is this really interesting thing we found, which is because it's mostly non-technical people who are doing that initial recruiting, right? What they'll do is this, they don't know what to look for, so they start using proxies. Like, oh, where did someone go to school? Or have they worked at a Google or a Rackspace? And that's all fine. But what about all the people who didn't go to a top school or you know, have worked at one of the most recognizable brands? Uh, all of those guys are getting hidden. They, they literally never surface. And so these companies never even get a chance to look at these people. So we're yeah. taking a different approach. We're actually surfacing those people based on the work that they're actually doing out there uh, online. Yeah, this gets to a, a, a whole deeper level of that, you know, I have a 19 year old and a lot of his friends are like, his, their parents uh, are like, don't, why are you even posting anything on Facebook? And I keep telling my son, you better start putting data into Facebook that signals to em future employers who you are and what skills you have and what you want to do with your life, right? And, and the schools don't teach this. The parents are afraid of this stuff, right? Being online yeah. and talking about yourself and having a blog and having a YouTube channel or having probably you know a place to demonstrate some code samples and stuff is that what you're uh, all studying your your systems are all looking at what the signaling is that people have put out there on, on so the internet? we're looking across a huge number of signals I mean some of them when we're talking about developers are obvious like looking at github at Google code at uh, bitbucket looking at stack exchange uh, you know it's incredibly rich we can actually go in and using the unstructured data there actually model the question and answer process as well as those sort of social signals like upvotes to evaluate this. We look literally at their open source code and you know, using some um, really incredible code analysis techniques, we can actually model how good the code is and rank it against other people. And using all that information, we can put together a profile of a developer and then rank them relative to other developers along different skills. So we're not yeah. just saying are they good developer, but you know, differentiating among Java and JavaScript and Haskell and everything that they may happen to know. Uh, but you know, we're pulling in a whole bunch of additional information now. So we're pulling in people's LinkedIn profiles and um, you know their their blog posts and Twitter feeds yeah. because we're finding out there's actually a lot of predictive information there. Yeah. 
you know, what people say about themselves is almost always not entirely true, but it is always informative and always predictive. So more signals is better. Right now we're pulling in on the order of 50,000 different features about people uh, and boiling that down and after a lot of uh, fancy algorithmic work, we're really looking at about 100 different dimensions, independent dimensions along which we're evaluating developers. We should uh, uh, talk about what's on our face because uh, you're in my first interview where I'm interviewing somebody else with Google Glass on, but we both have these Google Glasses on. Is it doing anything right now about, <laughs> is it showing me uh, candidates or showing you Pulling candidates? Pulling all kinds of information about you. <laughs> uh, yes. in it's the not future, on right now. <laughs> in the future, it, you'll, you'll go, um, in the future, you'll go to a recruiting event and you'll, the guild score will yeah. pop up as I'm looking to you and I'll know what skills you know. Uh, you know, I've actually done work, it all sounds very nefarious, as an undergrad I was on a CIA project to do lie detection off a of video. Yeah. And now I'm so excited about the possibilities of what you can do with Google Glass in those contexts. Yeah. Uh, and, and it really pulls into this whole idea of, of really taking in context and doing something useful with it. In this case, it's capturing signals, with whether it's glass or basis, watch. Um, in the case of Guild, it's really capturing context in terms of actual code samples ranging out to just the unstructured discussions in social uh, networks. How, uh, how much does it cost a Rackspace or a company like this to use it? And, uh, sure. And do you pay per person we hire? Or, uh, tell yeah, me how no, it works. No, no, no. So it's, it's a very simple model. It's a subscription model. So subscriptions start at, you know, you can buy a subscription for three months, you can buy a subscription for a year. Uh, we, f we found that, you know, it takes about a minimum of three months for a company to actually get value out of the product. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, three month subscription costs about $2,500, a one year subscription costs uh, about $8,500. Very so, cool. Um, yeah, pretty simple per user, uh, nothing more complex than that. And wh what is a traditional HR person, uh, a hiring manager, what do they need to know about the system after they get it? That, or h how do they need to change their approach to yeah, hiring? That's a great question. Because that's deeper, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, that's the one. So uh, a couple of things about, you know, so what we're doing is we're pulling very, uh, you know, it's a very powerful system. We're pulling a lot of different signals, as you know, Vivian said. And, but, but from a use standpoint, it's very simple. If you, you know, if you, you have a recruiter or a hiring manager who knows how to use LinkedIn, you can use. You can you know, show it to us, right? But yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I can show it to you. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, I, uh, what I have over here actually a profile of someone that uh, Rackspace actually hired. Yeah, very cool. And um, so let me actually walk you through what a profile looks like, and then I'll answer the question: What do you have to do differently? Right. So here is uh, Duncan, who uh, actually Rackspace hired a couple of months ago. Uh, they uh, found Duncan on. Uh, and we, we hired, it, hired him through Gil, right? Yeah, exactly, using, using the software, okay? Yeah. So we make the software available, and Duncan pop, popped up on you know, one of the recruiter's uh, screens. He has a high Gil score, a score of 87, uh, which is a super score. And as you can see, this is all information that we've pulled on Duncan that is out uh, publicly available. This is all public sources. So now we can tell you. A non-coder like, like me, what would my score be? It'd probably be, what, 10 or 20 or yeah, something? Yeah, probably like be something like that. Yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. going to get hired to code, but that's <laughs> yeah, probably exactly. good. <laughs> you don't want me <laughs> coding anything. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I think I would score 20. Okay? So it's, uh, I hate to say that, but it's. It is what it is, it's accurate. Yeah. Uh, so here, as you can see, we have all this information on Duncan, you know, what you would normally expect to see uh, on any other profile, right? Where he went to school and where does he work, et cetera. Now here's an interesting case, right? Look, I mean, he, he went to uh, UMass Amherst, he was going to, uh, you know, got a degree in physics, as an example. That usually doesn't kind of signal big time, you know, great developer, right? But when you go underneath, you know, all the information that we have on Duncan, look at, here are all the open source projects that we've discovered for him. And the different, uh, you know, we can tell you how many lines of code there are on each open source project, how yeah. many other developers are using that, et cetera. And then based on all that information, we can tell you here's the different actual skills that Robert is using today. Yeah. And how many years he's been using, how good he is. And then if, you know, all of this makes sense, we also show you everything else you might want to know about uh, Robert. I'm sorry, Duncan. Yeah, Robert. you're Robert. Um, so his LinkedIn profile, his blogs, any other signals that we've picked up. And then lastly, if this looks really interesting, you can contact him. Yeah. 
again, a publicly available you know, email that we picked up on it. So to your question about how do you use this differently, uh, retelling is giving you so much information about Duncan. Now, you know, just by looking at his profile, I can tell you this is a great developer. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is go spam him. Yep. And the problem today is most recruiters start by spamming. What yep. they'll do is they'll go on a site like LinkedIn or anywhere else and find thousands of developers and then send them a mass email. Uh, what we recommend is, look, we're giving you a lot of intelligence. Look through all, everything that he's doing, everything that he's blogging about, and write a really thoughtful, personalized note. And say, you know, based on this, we're doing these interesting projects. We'd love to have you come in and talk to someone. Uh, that's the right way to use this product. And when uh, our users use it that way, they get great responses. Yep. Uh, so that's no, because that's how you do it. If you take that kind of time, when you we we know you've checked me out on right. public, right? It, it's uh, always amazing when when PR yeah. people hit yeah. me the right yeah. way, you know, which is yeah. know what I write about, yeah. what I care about, the fact that I have Google Glass yeah. right now. If you're pitching me a Google Glass app, I'll be like, yeah, you know. If you're pitching me a Windows XP app. No, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, but it, that's part of yeah. just knowing what I write about, and what I'm passionate about right now, and that's yeah. that works for programmers as well, right? Absolutely, and you know, in, the, in this case, you know, if you notice, we also have something called an influence score, which is uh, out of uh, five, and uh, Duncan's a two point four, so it's, you know, which means how influential is he uh, in the developer community yeah. in general? And what was do great you, in this? Do you watch like? Uh, do you watch if somebody's giving speeches at various tech conferences? Is, does that raise the influence score? Not is today, but is that a signal that you watch? So it, it indirectly raises their influence score because we pick it up off of the signals that come through. Then yeah. it turns out if you're more influential, you the same quality of code gets graded slightly higher. Interesting. And so we need to do a little bit of a compensation for that. Um, but it also gives us this additional independent piece of information about how influential someone is. Yeah. So we pick it up via secondary signal. Because I just know how I, uh, where, where my influence goes if I'm on stage at a conference and I do a good job, which is a harder thing. But, but it's hard to get on stage at a, a South by Southwest or a Node.js yeah. JS conference or, oh, yeah. you know, or an Absolutely. O'Reilly conference, right? It's, there's a filtering yep. mechanism. And if you got through that filtering mechanism to get picked, that tells me you're influential in some way. And then if you did a great job, everybody's tweeting, oh my God, I learned so much from this yeah. guy's talk, right? And I, I'm gonna change my whole career because of this talk. That, that shows yeah. influence as well, right? That's right, yeah. And, and so, so those signals, those. you can pick, pick that up, that retweeting behavior that happens at conferences and, and that sentiment that, that people- all, all of that's there. And you know, we're, we're, we're really pushing on all of that, looking at sentiment, like how yeah. people talk about a skill. Uh, you know, they, they hate on C and they talk positively about, um, you know, Cassandra. Turns out that's really predictive of their skill abilities. Um, and what they say on, you know, just in the, even in the resumes or in offhand on the web pages, and they say, you know, I'm a C slash C++ programmer. If you're really either one of those, you wouldn't put it that way. Yeah. Turns out that's a negative predictor of ability. And so we see these really clear signals, structured and unstructured. You just have to go out and pull it out and then have the sort of scale of, of modeling capabilities to actually appropriately model that and say something useful. Yeah, this is really, it, so th it, it, we covered what the company has to yeah. change or the HR, but people have to change yeah. in this new world. We have to get more comfortable with talking about our interests and our work and publishing what we've done. I, this is why I liked uh, Geek List, right? Because right. it lets you brag, hey, yeah. I wrote the backend system for Twitter. That's important to signal to the internet so other people can find you, you know, because, hey, I want somebody like that to work for me, right? Yeah, and in, so in our case, what we like is the fact that don't, you, know, you don't have to change your everyday patterns for that. So if you're just contributing to open source, we're gonna pick you up. We're gonna pick yeah. up those signals. We don't need you to go someplace else and brag about it. Right. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the developers just keep doing you know, a lot of these things. Yeah, sure, if you tweet a lot, that helps. If you are more active on Quora and places like that, that'll help. But if you're just doing your everyday work, uh, using the tools that are available. But so many kids are scared, even kids who are in the Facebook generation, you know, my 19 year old, he just doesn't feel impelled to talk about his studying, mm -hmm. right? And I, I want him to share yeah. when he goes to university, what is he learning? Because that signals to his first employer 
what is he passionate about? And if, if you're only talking about baseball and getting drunk on the weekend, that, yeah. that'll get you a certain kind of yeah. lifestyle, right? And if you talk about you know, chemistry and how jacked up you are about the, the biology class you're in, all of a sudden, you know, he wants to go into, uh, into um, uh, criminal justice. Okay. So the police departments are going to go, man, I need, a, I need a chemist on staff to do DNA research, right? And they're going to be doing the same kind of research that Rackspace is doing yeah. to find a Node.js programmer, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, p part of the beauty of it, actually, and that sense of, of doom and fear that comes with, oh, if I say something wrong, it's going to follow me forever, it's really the opposite. You have your whole life to explain who you are. Yeah. So I do a lot of work in educational technology also. In fact, we're able to model online free-form discussions by students and identify the concepts they do and don't understand with amazingly high accuracy. Yeah. We can incorporate it in homeworks and emails and make it even more accurate. No one ever had to take a test. It was yeah. never a high-stakes moment where you could blow it all. And it's the same thing here. Yeah. Do actual right. good work and it comes through. Yeah. If there's a little bit of code that's not perfect, that's okay. Or if there's one drunken weekend photo, great. Right. You know, because that yeah. shows you're a real person. I want to <laughs> exactly. see that. When I hire people, I want to see some reality, yeah. you know, some, some uh, you know, the fact that you're sharing your entire life, because that's part of what we do here at Ragspace. Yeah. Uh, we want real people, right? We don't want just robots exactly. that, that fit in a little box and, and check off the boxes. We want people who are going to do things and take risks, right? And part of that's Part of that comes through there too. But if all I see is drunken photos, you're not, not going to get hired. Exactly. So the trick is to have one drunken photo and, I, and a hell of a lot of great code, right? <laughs> so you know, as we're actually pulling in all this information and we're yeah. building hard models of the code itself, we're building predictive models to help smooth out and, and fill in the data, we're also starting to look at issues like adaptive models that yeah. really say, who is a Rackspace engineer? Yeah. And what does Rackspace need? And that's Cultural different fit. than other places. It picks up on culture, it picks up on technology differences, yeah. uh, you know, subtly picks up on personality. You know, wouldn't it be great if your recruiters or just you know, your engineering heads could just say, I wish we had three more Duncans. Yeah. And you drag Duncan over and drop him into a bucket and we start to auto-populate with people. And you say, uh, yeah, no, uh, not that one. And we just figure out what you're after and start to fill it in. Wow. Subtle details really driving the process. Rather than, I need a Java programmer that knows Bayesian modeling. And you give that to a recruiter, and they've heard of Java, but they've never heard of Bayesian modeling. No. And they're going to go out and do the best job they can, because uh, that's their job. But they can't truly add the expertise that a real engineer has or that our sister can impart. I'm, th you know, I'm supposed to write a blog for LinkedIn, <laughs> so I'm thinking about using this interview there. This really isn't totally competitive with LinkedIn, is it? Because our, our re uh, recruiters use LinkedIn all the time. Absolutely, it's it's additive, isn't it? Absolutely, I mean, it, so. it, it, it gives you more context. I mean, yeah. you know, the, your your resume or CV or LinkedIn profile is only giving you this much. We want to fill out that story, right? Because a lot of that story isn't being told. Uh, you know, that's the amazing part, especially when you look at something like developers. Uh, because there's so much more to someone based on the work that they've done that is already out there, but that's not coming out in their LinkedIn profile. So we're just trying to fill in, fill in those gaps. Yeah. And quite honestly, I, I just saw over the weekend a uh, blog post hit um, Hacker News pretty high. Uh, I finally quit LinkedIn. And I read it, and it's like, you know, I jokingly said it's like an ad for Guild. Uh, because he's complaining about getting constantly spammed by people that don't actually understand yep. the technologies that he uses. Yeah. Um, I quit LinkedIn you know. years ago but <laughs> for, <laughs> for a similar, for a similar, but not. Uh, yeah, for uh, I was getting spammed because in the early days it was all about passing resumes to right. people. Yeah. And having the social proof of someone semi-famous. Uh, yeah. I worked at Microsoft, and they wanted someone semi-famous to pass the resume on, because yeah. then it, yeah. it looked better. It's, there's some social proof to it, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and in a way, we can be there to take some of that spammy load off, because people are starting to really get dissuaded from engaging with LinkedIn, which is unfortunate, because yeah. that's actually really useful information um, you know, for signaling out to the world who you are, but it's getting used and abused by 
people that otherwise don't know how to engage with developers. Yeah. Um, and it, I think we really do complement that potential really well. Now, HR is really uh, under under the gun. It's uh, I, I, you know, there, there was a Yahoo recruiter a, years, a couple of years or three years ago who kept asking me for resumes, <laughs> and I kept answering back. Dude, I don't want a job that requires a resume. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you want me to work for you, let's talk, but let's not go down the down the right. traditional path. I don't want to be on a traditional yeah. path. That's what I'm signaling to the world is I want to go a non-traditional path. And he never got a clue. <laughs> it's like because <laughs> they are, they people want to be in that little box and yeah. have everything in the database that they need to get their job done. And no, I'm not going to do that kind of job. <laughs> And technology yeah. should facilitate. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be boxes. You shouldn't. I'm going to say something awful. You shouldn't be forced to just like something or not like something. Yeah. You should be able to express a richness, and then it's our job as technologists to turn that into something useful. Very cool. Where? Uh, tell me about the company. How, uh, how is it funded? How many yeah, people yeah, are working yeah. there? And what, what kind of thing are you trying to build? Yeah, no. So uh, you know, we started about a month, I say, a year and a half ago, and. Um, it was an interesting start because uh, my co-founder uh, Luca is, uh, you know, he's a hardcore technologist. He's our CTO, and uh, he'd started his own company called Code Loop, which was trying to solve the same problem, uh, but he, you know, different way. And uh, I was trying to figure this out myself. So we connected about uh, two years ago at this point, and we started comparing notes. And he built some of this really interesting technology to do code analysis, etc. So anyway, the way we started was Luca and I coming together. We actually merged uh, our, our two companies together. And um, we, so, you know, from idea about a year and a half ago to our first uh, beta product a little over a year ago, which was Guild Source. And um, we are uh, today about uh, approaching 100 customers, about 40 people. We just closed this earlier this year, uh, raised about $8 million. So, still relatively early days. Very cool. Uh, where do we learn more about it? Uh, we can go to guild.com, www.gild.com. And uh, we've also written up in the New York Times. Uh, uh, Just over the, on Sunday. On Sunday. Very the cool. Sunday business so business is hot? Uh, yeah, we're yes. getting a lot of, lots of incoming uh, leads. Yeah. So I better get, get you back so you can take care of all the orders that are probably coming <laughs> in from the New York Times. Thank you. Thank Thank you so Thanks much. a lot. Thanks, Thanks for having us. And I'll see you back in the board. Yeah, you know, yeah. with the glasses. Yes. <laughs> a special connection. You, I, you didn't, it's very nice of you to clue them in. You had, of course, just sent me that directly to my brain. And yeah. So I already knew we were getting back to <laughs> Inside jokes between glassware. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.